Hey, what's up, folks? This is Nick from TSPROF. With this video, we are starting a series of the videos where we're going to be diving into the abrasive materials to help you better understand the difference in them, uh, which type of metal they are used with, how they are applied, and for which purposes they are used best. So in this first video, let's consider some basics about the abrasive materials. Abrasives are substances of high hardness which are used for processing various surfaces. They are used in shaping or finishing a workpiece by friction, which results in the removal of the surface layer of the material from the processed area. They are divided by hardness, super hard, hard and soft. Chemical compositions, uh, they can be either natural or synthetic, um, as well as by the size of the grinding grid. Coarse, medium, uh, fine, extra fine. Uh, their grid size is measured according to the various international measurement systems like VEPA, JIS, or JOST. Their shape and hardness determine the mechanics of work in the grinding process. The abrasive grain have rough edges, often ending in dots, which reduce the contact area of the surface, due to which pressure is localized at that point. When the abrasive and the material come into contact, the force applied to the grains causes fragments of the material to break away, simultaneously flattening the abrasive grain or causing the grain to separate from the rest of the abrasive. The more firmly the grid is anchored to the abrasive layer, the less wear it is subjected to and the longer its working life. As a rule, materials used as abrasives are either hard minerals from six points and above according to the Mohs scale or synthetic stones, some of which may be chemically and physically identical to the natural ones. The most prominent example here is diamond, which is extracted by mining and at the same time is grown artificially in the laboratory. Both versions have the same working capabilities but uh, synthetic stones are significantly cheaper. Let's now proceed to the frequently used synthetic materials in sharpening. Artificial diamond is a cubicolotropic form of elementary carbon which is synthesized under high pressure. It is used everywhere for processing of hard alloys, stone, glass, non-ferrous metals, and so on. This is one of the most popular abrasives. Speaking of the abrasive properties, synthetic and natural diamonds have the same working properties. Uh, the same crystal lattice, density, hardness, and so on. They differ only in grain shape, uh, surface quality, st strength, and uh, brittleness. The average wear resistance of this kind of stones is several times higher than the wear resistance of boron carbide and silicon carbide. Diamond is an almost perfect abrasive able to effectively cope with any steel, work quickly and don't pollute the workspace too much. It is slowly produced and slowly salted, but at the same time it is the most expensive option. They are best suited for powder steels as well as for mono steels of high hardness. Of course you can use them with soft steels, but at the same time you will get increased wear of the stone and not always satisfactory secondary bevel surface. Knives sharpened with diamonds as a rule have aggressive cut and uh, um, acceptable durability. Diamonds can be in galvanic, organic binder and in the paste form. We will look at the difference between them in our next videos of this series. Silicon carbide is a binary inorganic chemical compound of silicon and carbon. It is one of the most widely used for processing better steels. Silicon carbide is harder than aluminum oxide, but more brittle, resulting in early abrasive wear. They show the best results on steels 60 HRC and above. They work excellently on powders. They are distinguished by high performance on all grain sizes. The disadvantages are that they do not work well on stainless steel with hardness of 58 HRC. Stones are easily flattened, work both with water and special liquids. This kind of stone is suitable for most tasks, hunting and carcass cutting, uh, everyday wear, uh, some kitchen knives depending on the steel grade. The nature of the marks is reminiscent of the marks from diamonds. And that's why the cut of the knives become 
aggressive. Electrocurantum is an artificial aluminum oxide, the second most popular abrasive substance after silicon carbide. It is used for processing various hard surfaces, both in the form of abundant stones and in the form of various soft pastes. Aluminum oxide works better than silicon carbide on steels below 50 HHRC and generally on soft stainless steel. It works well and softly on steels 60-61 HRC, but not so fast as silicon carbide. In contrast to silicon carbide, the aluminum oxide's minimum grain size can be less than 1 micron, and this makes possible ultra-fine finishing and receives a mirror on the cutting edge. They are well suited for sharpening carpentry tools, most of kitchen knives, Japanese uh, hunting knives, ADC knives, of course, taking into account the steel grade. Silicon carbide and aluminum oxide stones can be well combined uh, depending on the sharpening tasks. For example, a grinding work can be done with silicon carbide and finishing with aluminum oxide. Natural stones are also widely used in sharpening. As a rule, they are made of shale rocks, a variety of rocks with a parallel layered arrangement of intergrowths of flow or medium temperature minerals. Unlike other natural abrasive materials like emery, corundum, or diatomite and natural diamond, stones of this kind are widely used in sharpening. The most popular natural stones that come into my mind now are uh, Belgian, Japanese natural stone, and American Arkansas. So let's consider the last one. They are suited for most type of steels and used with oil. Polishing paste like Luxor can be used with Arkansas. This allows you to spend less time sharpening. They are applied for finishing works and densify the structure of metal. Especially it's evident during long-term sharpening. And the longer it is, the better. In addition, the use of Arkansas makes the sharpening of the cutting edge more stable and the retention of sharpness longer. Arkansas stone provides a premium level of sharpness and can last for years with minimal wear. Let us know in the comments what kind of stones you are using for your knives and how you combine them. In our next videos, we will cover in details the most frequently used abrasive materials in sharpening. So guys, thank you for watching, leave your likes below and of course, subscribe to our channel to never miss more interesting videos on this subject. Take care and stay sharp.